What's up everyone, Alex here. If you've been a longtime fan of the channel, you probably noticed that I don't make it a habit of trying every single game out there. Before I can even consider a game for review, it has to meet a certain standard of quality that rules out a whole bunch of games. And when you're literally sent hundreds of emails from various people requesting you to check their game out like I do, it's even tougher to sift through these messages to find one that even meets that high standard. But there are times, whether by destiny or fate, that I stumble upon a game that shows so much promise that I couldn't help but talk about it, despite my channel's strong Japanese RPG leanings. That fateful event happened on June 15, 2020, when a trailer for Potionomics was shown during that year's PC game show. Potionomics' trailer dazzled me with its wonderful and charming characters, featuring a gorgeous aesthetic and a soundtrack that had a strong potential to be one of my absolute favorites. I didn't even mind the fact that it had card game elements, despite my reluctance in playing games with it. The only downside to all of this was that it was slated to be released on the PC. And as a Mac guy and a full-time YouTuber that's merely scrimping by, the prospects of obtaining a PC to play this game upon its release was extremely slim. Fast forward a little over two years later, and I find myself with an incredible Omen by HP sponsorship and a brand new Omen 16 laptop to play games on. And as if by fate, the folks over at Exceed and Voracious Games also announced that Potionomics would be ready to release the same year. What can I say? When the stars align, they align. This is fitting, especially given how Potionomic Sylvia is thrust upon an industry that she doesn't know much about. Much like my early experiences with being a YouTuber, Sylvia will have to surround herself with friends and patrons that'll help teach her the ropes and provide her with tips to haggle her way to victory. Sadly, her uncle passed away, leaving her with a dilapidated shadow of a store that's in dire need of TLC along with a massive debt that's dying to be paid. Determined to make a name for herself with the goal of absolving herself of any financial responsibility, Sylvia will need to become the land's best potion maker to meet the many challenges of being an entrepreneur. But one has to wonder, does she have what it takes to perpetuate a perfectly potent potion practice? And before you ask, no, I don't have an uncle who left me with a store and a debt I have to pay. Thank goodness for that. At its core, Potionomics is a shop management sim with deck building gameplay, developed by Voracious Games and published by Xseed, who provided me with this review code on Steam. Since Potionomics is only available on PC, I need to bring up again how serendipitous it was to be able to play this on my Omen 16 laptop, and I also want to thank Omen by HP for sponsoring this video. Because this laptop is so powerful, I'm able to bump Potionomics graphics up to full QHD resolution, with every graphics option set to Epic running at 120Hz. So whether you're looking to play some really high fidelity games or want to stream your gameplay to others, check out Omen's line of gaming computers at omen.com. How you play Potionomics might not actually be clear, but let me give you the bare bones basics. Potionomics' main story is divided into multiple parts, with each part book ended by a competition. You have 9 days before the competition to brew the best versions of each of the required concoctions needed to participate. In order to do so, you will have to discover new materials to use, and for that, you'll need to meet new friends who will aid you in improving your business. The way you'll meet them is just by going through the main story, and if there's any additional requirements to meet them, they'll let you know. And your friend's aid is really helpful, and you shouldn't underestimate them. Mint, for instance, can be sent to expeditions so that she can bring back rare materials that you can give to Quinn, who can then copy any material you give them so that they're able to sell it to you the following day. This is just one of the many ways that your friends can be helpful, and it's up to you to figure out how to utilize them. And naturally, you'll have to make enough money to afford said materials, after all, they may be your friends, but their businesses aren't charities. You'll have to sell some of the potions you've made, and open up the store. 
Once customers come up to the counter to pay for their purchases, you'll need to haggle with them to bump the prices of your potions. This is done via a card game mechanic that has you battling each customer for a better price. To be clear, no one dies during these transactions, but your wallet might, especially if you're not able to raise the prices of your wares. This haggling mechanic is actually a clever facade to what is essentially a great introduction to deck building gameplay. You can only have 20 cards in your deck, but by the end of the game, you'll have a ton of awesome cards you'll want to use. Deciding which cards to use with what little availability you have is at the core of this style of gameplay, and as someone who has merely dabbled in this sort of gameplay, I found it really easy to find my favorites and construct a deck that fulfills my strategy. But that doesn't mean that I didn't wish that I had a few more slots to use. But that's just me. You'll obtain these cards by either hanging out or giving gifts to your friends, and then ranking up your relationship with them. If this all sounds like Persona's social link system, it's because it certainly functions the same way. What's really cool about the cards that you get from your friends is that their personalities match the type of card you'd expect from them. For instance, many of Mint's cards will grant you shields to protect you from being stressed, mainly because Mint is a hero, and heroes protect others. Everything sounds so easy so far, right? What makes things a little more complicated in Potionomics is its time system, which really does complicate things a fair bit. Almost every action that you do in Potionomics takes time, and it won't be easy to grasp at first. Let me list down a few things to consider. When you open the store to sell potions, for instance, this will spend at least two of the game's six time segments for the day. Brewing potions can take as little as two time segments, but can later brew all the way to the following day. And here's a tricky one. Traveling to see your friends will only spend one time segment after you return to the store. However, hanging out or ranking up with one of your friends can spend one time segment in addition to the aforementioned travel time. As you can probably imagine, time management is at the heart of Potionomics gameplay. And thankfully, you can take the time to just sit back and relax and think through your strategy before you do anything, as time does not unfold in real time. Thank goodness for that! It's in this sense that players who love min-maxing and getting into the nitty-gritty of games mechanics will find a lot to love with Potionomics different systems. That said, even if you're not the type to min-max like myself, I do find it fun to try my best and see how much I can make my days efficient. Sure, the thought of managing time might be stressful, but it's all a matter of perspective, man. Kidding aside, the game systems are all thought out well, and given that it has zero real-time elements, unlike other RPG shop games that have you venturing forth into dungeons and whatnot, the depth of gameplay showcased here will be loved by anyone, Japanese RPG fans included, who wish that they could play a turn-based game with a ton of depth. And the fact that it's so approachable despite its depth is incredible too. Engaging and haggling is super fun, and knowing that I've ripped up, <coughs> excuse me, enhanced my buyer's purchases makes me feel good about the work I put into these battles. And I'd suspect that you'd feel the same feeling of satisfaction once you engage in these sessions as well. All told, I do find that Potionomics does need a number of quality of life features that will help players feel as though they're making the right choices and not fighting with the game itself. There are a few pieces of information you need that are only available when you're at the shop, meaning you won't have access to these while visiting your friends. There's also no way to know if you're given a material to coin the copy in any of the game's material details. So, for example, if Mint comes back from an expedition, you won't know if Quinn has any of these materials already. You still have to go to Quinn to check if these materials are already taken care of. And while that doesn't seem like too much of a pain, there are many other instances where this feature would be immensely useful. And last but certainly not least, saving is only available at the shop. And given how you can do so much while away at the shop, it would have been nice to be able to save here as well. There are a few more things that I can think of that the developers can implement to make our gameplay experience smoother, 
but I do want to add that during my time reviewing this game, I was able to send a more comprehensive list of suggestions to the developers, who were more than willing to take them. With so many deep interconnecting mechanics that can overwhelm, there has to be another reason why I'm playing this, right? Apart from the obvious strong art direction and characterization that I've talked about in both the trailer and impressions video I made for the game, what ultimately made me keep playing was its story and characters. Whenever you think of RPG shop sims, you don't really think about the stories or the characters you've met. But Potionomics places an increased importance on every character that you meet, whether it's a patron of your store or a new friend. There are 81 different patrons you'll encounter in the game, each with a unique quirk depending on their attitude and occupation. Now, I won't go into detail on that, but I'm hoping what I said will clue you in on how to deal with them. And to that end, every friend you meet is excellently characterized. This is done thanks to a combination of strong character design, fantastic animation, and clever writing. I find it, if you can identify which character is talking just by their dialogue, then the writers have done a fantastic job, and that's certainly what you can expect in Potionomics. And before you ask, yes, there is romance in this game, and I've found that you can romance almost everyone in Potionomics, so if you love that sort of thing, know that it is possible. Beyond a veneer of capitalism, however, is a fantastic tale, one weaved in with some light mystery that's merely enhanced by its powerful cast. While the entire game isn't voice acted, I often lamented at the possibility of how voice acting might have been able to lift Potionomics' highs even further. And if it's not apparent yet, I love Potionomics' cast, and I'd go to bat for any one of them. And before I forget, the music! Holy heck, the music! The entire soundtrack is composed by Greg Nicolet, whose musical credits can mostly be found in animation. You can pretty much imagine every single theme in Potionomics can be fit into either an animated movie or show. Coupled with its fantastic animations, it makes playing the game feel as though you're playing a high-production animated film, which completely elevates it from just being a game presented in a visual novel format. I've always said that animations and music could elevate this kind of presentation, and Potionomics smartly nailed all of that. The compositions encompass a wide variety of feelings and emotions, and its various themes really embody the characters they're meant to represent. Whenever the soundtrack goes on sale, you bet that I'll be there on day one to pick it up. Considering my reaction the first time I saw Potionomics, it was just love at first sight. And thankfully, the final product turned out to be such a fantastic game that I just can't further express my enjoyment of it. While this game might go under the radar for many, anyone who plays this game will enjoy a feeling of elation and wonder as you get to know Sylvia's many friends and foes. Potionomics will warm the hearts of players who decide to open up shop alongside Sylvia, satisfying fans of deep and rich turn-based gameplay, deck builders, and just plain fans of well-told stories and characters. And it stands as one of the best games I've played this year.